socioeconomic rights and accountability program uh, project, I beg your pardon, has urged the chairman of the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, Professor Mahmoud Yakub, to reopen voters' registration to allow 7 million Nigerians that started their registration online to complete the process. Serap further stated that the act of closing the gates on eligible Nigerians and denying them the opportunity and time to complete their registration cannot preserve the trust in the electoral process. INEC recently disclosed that out of um, 10 million Nigerians, 10 million plus Nigerians who carried out their pre-registration online, uh, 3.4 million completed the process at physical center. This represents just 3.2 32.8% of the completed online registration. Joining us to discuss this is Festus Okoye, National Commissioner, Information and Voter Education Committee, INEC, and also Olua Dari Kolawali, Deputy Director, SERAP. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for joining us. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank you. Uh, let me start with Mr. Olua Dari, who is obviously representing SERAP. Two months ago, um, you had said that um, you were suing INEC over the extension of voters' registration. And then fast forward to today, you're threatening again that you're going to sue INEC for ending voters' registration. Help us understand um, what this is about. Of course, um, I, we will let Mr. Okoye explain to us why the CBR, which is supposed to be continuous, has been shut down. Uh, thank you very much. The initial suit that you mentioned is um, uh, I ne is Sarah asking on behalf of Nigerians for an extension to the period for I need to uh, end the continuous voter registration. But in this instance, this is a reaction to what I make itself has put out. That is the data uh, that out of 10 million Nigerians, more than 7 million Nigerians started the process and could not conclude that process with registration. So what we're asking now is not, we're not asking INEC to extend the time. The courts are determined that clearly. And we're not asking INEC to reopen the continuous the registration as is well for all Nigerians, even though that would be desirable. What we are asking is, if INEC is saying that 7 million Nigerians have started the process, can INEC allow these individuals to complete the process? And the law supports this position in this aspect. Equity is also on the side of these individuals. And even the facts as we have today supports these individuals. These are Nigerians, and we're talking about 7 million people. This is not 700, this is not 7,000. 7 million Nigerians have taken a step in good faith to start the registration process. INEC should merely allow them to complete that process so that they can participate in the electoral process come 2023. I really see nothing that INEC will lose in this instance. And Nigeria, not only INEC, Nigeria and Nigerians, they have a lot to gain by allowing the 7 million would-be voters to be able to complete their registration. And most importantly, INEC has not come out. That would be interesting to hear from Mr. Okoye, whether we'll hear that during this conversation. INEC has not disaggregated the details of the 7 million and shown us possibly, which I think is the least that INEC could do, tell us the details of these 7 million people. Um, how, why they did not uh, come, they could not come to the process. And part of our own investigations, which we are still collecting presently, if uh, this ends up in court, is we have seen details of many of these individuals who, for no reason of theirs, could not complete the process at the physical registration centers. So it is only in the interest of Nigerians that these 7 million people are allowed to complete their registration. Um, Mr. Luwadari, I did speak with. Um the um, INEC guys in Lagos, and um, they did say something about the fact that the, when the extension date was announced, a lot of people, there was a lax of sorts. People, you know, there was no longer a rush of sorts. And then they waited until the last minute again to crowd their, their offices. I think I also had a conversation with Mr. Okoye, but I'm not holding brief for them. So I'm wondering, this 7 million, those who fall in this category, we can't all just you know, lump them as people who waited for last minute. But could it have also been that certain people had taken the timing for granted, hence what INEC has put out? Because maybe we like last minute that, that, things? That, that can't be. And I've really had that over time in public. And sometimes when we repeat this falsehoods too often, it takes on a semblance of truth that cannot be true. Seven million people cannot conspire 
to register late. Really, that's not the issue. But like I've told you, we are compiling different um, uh, data, a data set of these individuals, if this ends up in court. And I can tell you, a lot of these individuals completed those things online and could not conclude the registration in physical centers, mostly because of the various logistical challenges in those centers, including cases of bribery and corruption by some my next staff in some of those centers. So really, it cannot be their fault. And it cannot be the fault of 7 million people uh, to wait till the last minute, so to speak. It will be interesting to see the data of those 7 million Nigerians, as I make it said, to be able to make a headway as to uh, the modus of getting them to conclude their registration. Mr. Koye, um, this, uh, let me throw it to you. First and foremost, Einek, um, Serap is saying they have a case that 7 million people cannot conspire to not do the right thing or to not register and finish their registration on time. The other question that some other people are asking is, what's the rush? Elections are next year. Why end it now? Uh, I think that we should really begin from uh, Sarah acknowledging that they went to court uh, to ask for certain reliefs. And part of the declaratory relief they asked for is a determination whether the Independent National Electoral Commission has the constitutional and legal rights to put a seal on when the CVR should end. They also ask for a determination whether the uh, uh, commission can uh, um, uh, uh, conclude the CBR uh, within a period of uh, 90 days to the election. Now, there were two issues, two fundamental issues that the court made a determination on. The first is that the court affirmed the constitutional and legal rights of the commission to make a determination on when registration should end and when registration should begin. Secondly, the court made a determination that the, the setup did not have the local standard to approach the court on behalf of those he claimed did approach the court uh, on their behalf. That, that is one. Secondly, I think that rushing to court will not help our democracy, will not help the electoral process, and will also not deepen uh, the, the, the uh, democracy which uh, Sarah claims uh, to be um, defending. I, I thought that the first thing to do, the first approach, should be for Sarah and his leadership to approach the Independent National Electoral Commission in a consultative manner and find out from the commission why the commission ended the CVR the day it ended the CVR and why these seven, these seven million persons that set up as isolated uh, and is fighting for, why they exist. I thought that that should have been the best approach. But having said that, I want to say that there is, we do not have seven million Nigerians that started their registration and could not complete, who are waiting to complete their registration. When we disaggregated the data for the first and second quarter of the registration process, we found out that out of the total number of registered, of those who did pre-registration, so to say, over 1.8 million were Nigerians who are in diaspora and who could not, who thought that maybe during the December period they will come back and complete the physical, uh, uh, complete their biometrics, but they did not come back. So there is no compulsion that anybody who started the pre-registration must complete the pre-registration. It's not compulsory. So people from all parts of the world who are Nigerians, some of them started the pre-registration. Not only that, there were some Nigerians who started the pre-registration, abandoned the pre-registration, and went and registered physically. There were also some Nigerians who started the pre-registration, abandoned it, and started afresh. It is an aggregation of these figures that Serap is saying that they have a, 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 a store of 7 million Nigerians that have not registered. I'm going to... Section 10, subsection 2. Okay. Just, just, just a second. Section 10, subsection 2 of the Electoral Act is very clear. It says each applicant for registration under the continuous registration system shall appear in person at the registration venue with any of the following documents. And it lists the documents. The pre 
registration was an attempt by the commission to ease the process of registration for Nigerians. It is called pre-registration. You have not registered because we, if you do pre-registration, you must still appear in person before a registration officer in a registration center designated by the commission for you to complete your biometrics. If you don't do your biometrics, the implication is that your pre-registration has lapsed. So these seven million that Serap is talking about, their registration, their pre-registration has lapsed because they did not show up to complete the registration as required by Section 10, Subsection 12 of the Electoral Act. Uh, Mr. Okoye, as, as much as I appreciate that you know you're doing your job, but how much information is out there? Because you've quoted this section of the Act. How many of these people know that section? How many of them know that there's a time lapse for that biometrics, you know, um, segment of their registration? Because I know that a few media houses have tried to rigorous, rigorously, I beg your pardon, have these conversations with INEC officials in their different states or cities. But how much information is out there? Because 7 million is quite a number. And if they do not have this information at their fingertips, how would they know if they have a problem or not? In, 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 the, in the portal, in the INEC online portal, it is very, very clear, it was very clear that what they are doing is pre-registration. In the portal, we have seven services. Pre-registration for new registrants is only one of the services. For those who lost their PVCs, for those whose PVCs are damaged, their own uh, platform is completely different. For those who want to do information review, their own platform is completely different. For those who want to locate where their PVCs are, they can use the PVC locator in our platform to locate their PVCs. So those who are engaging pre-registration understood that they're engaging pre-registration. And when you pre-register, you are given a time within which you are going to go to any of our state offices or local government offices or any of the rotational centers to go and complete your biometrics. So all of them, we are aware. Those who enter the portal, we are aware that what they were doing is pre-registration and not registration. And they were aware that after some time, if you don't complete your biometrics, that your pre-registration will lapse. They were aware. So we're presuming that these people who all go online or use these online platforms are learned enough to understand the English as plain as it is that's on that, on that platform. Don't forget some of them have to use someone to help them. And if that help isn't there, I'm sure most of them are unable to. But again, I'm not in any way trying to make excuses. We're just looking at scenarios, possible scenarios that could have caused these 7 million people to not complete their registration. Um, but... Are there other languages let, let, on that let, portal? Let me, let me just say this. Go let, ahead. Let me, let, me, let me just say this. This pre-registration was the first portal that the commission opened. And this portal was opened on the 28th day of June, 2021. 28th day of June, 2021. That was when we started the pre-registration. So if for a period of one year, somebody did pre-registration and could not complete biometrics in one year, the implication is that the person was not really or is not really interested in carrying out any form of uh, biometric registration. Mm. I'm coming back to you, Mr. Lua Dari. You uh, have continued to say that um, if Nigerians have doubts about the independence and impartiality of INEC, uh, they, they are more likely to have less confidence in the electoral process, thereby undermining democracy. But then he's saying that there, there are directions, there's information that has been clearly written on the site for those who are registering or re-registering or pre-registering. And, and these rules or you know, um, um, regulations are supposed to be followed. Uh, but if it takes over a year and the person has abandoned the process, then it means that they were not in any way interested in it. So again, can INEC be really totally blamed for all the laxes that... Um, these people who have not necessarily registered, uh, can they be blamed for it? Of course, uh, INEC has that responsibility. So aside from the constitutional responsibility of INEC to conduct pre and fair elections, Section 2 of the Electoral Act itself includes civic education as one of the core duties of INEC. And that means that INEC educates Nigerians, would be voters, 
as to their duties and obligations, including the various procedures set up as INEC, by INEC. So the duty, the ball is in INEC's court in that regard. But that is really beside the point. Um, while I appreciate Mr. Okoye's invitation uh, for consultation, INEC has not been forthcoming with information, which is part of what the Freedom of Information Act mandates public institutions like INEC to proactively disclose about the disaggregation of the 7 million. Naturally, this kind of data should be available to all Nigerians. And really, I, I do not think that 7 million Nigerians started online and did not comment the physical registration of the centers. Like I've told you, we are collating data of our own from Nigerians who have been affected by this. Who will be the applicants if this ends up in court, not Sarah? And we've seen that quite a lot of them that we have seen completed the registration online, went to the physical centers, and for various reasons, including cases of bribery and corruption, could not complete the second phase of the process at the registration centers specifically. Definitely, uh, those are not those who started online and did not complete within one year. And then thirdly, to Mr. Okoye's point about the, uh, the online registration being pre-registration as an innovation initiative of INEC, that is great. It's, uh, we are, INEC did well by doing that, but you should understand, if INEC has set up an online platform as a pre-registration process, then INEC is also committed for those who have started that to complete. INEC cannot start an initiative get divert people, so to speak, to do that, and now tell them, like Mr. Okoye is telling us, that it's simply pre-registration, and as it were, they do not have any, any right uh, to have said the register. That is not fair at all. It, at the least, equity supports these individuals who have done what I next said they should by going online to start the process. Whether we call it pre-registration or by whatever name so-called, I don't think that is important. What is important is they have followed INEX procedures and they've started the process. And now what we are simply asking INEC is to allow them. Because if INEC had not set up an online platform for pre-registration, naturally, whatever INEC tells these individuals to do, they will do. They would have ended up in the physical centers. But INEC has used this discretion, which is wonderful, by the way, to set up an online pre-registration. And these individuals have committed to that. And that is not... We are not even talking of those that completed that aspect and went to the physical centers. Mr. Okoye is not talking about those ones that went to the physical centers. And we have this facts. And if this ends up in court, this will be put before the public by way of uh, uh, in our court processes. This, we have individuals, lots of them out of the 7 million, that completed the process online, that went to the physical centers but could not conclude that. Can you say INEC would not be responsible for that? Definitely, INEC is responsible for that. And lastly, the facts that we've witnessed in Nigeria over the years is that we've seen low voter turnout. We've seen voter apathy in Nigeria. And it, 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 it scales down that we see people register, take a, 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 a lesser number of those that registered get their PVCs. A lesser number of those that got their PVCs ends up being accredited, accredited coming out to be accredited on election day. Only even a lesser number gets to vote. And then we see the numbers shrinking every step of the way. Don't you think it is our next responsibility to ensure that as many people that want to participate in that process is allowed to participate? We cannot on the one hand complain of voter apathy. And INEC is doing everything it can to ensure that this, uh, this continues. Really, no. The least INEC can do is to do everything possible within its powers and within the statutory mandate to allow these people. They've shown interest. Equity is in their favor. The law is in their favor as well to start the process, to allow them to, con to, come, uh, to conclude the process. We are not asking INEC to, uh, to extend time for all Nigerians. No. But uh, like you said earlier, 7 million is a huge number, and it would make a lot of difference. And when you look at our historical antecedent in 2015 and 2019, how, how many votes do we have uh, in the presidential elections to, for a win? 7 million will go a long way in all aspects of the elections to determine who would win and, and who will parallel the affairs of this country at various levels uh, for the next four years. We really cannot trade with this number, really, in the interest of democracy, and even in the interest of our next own um, duties to the public. And if anything, INEC needs to demonstrate this to end that much in that public trust so that it, people can see INEC for what it is, independent and acting in the best interest of Nigerians. Well, quickly, before we wrap things up, because time is almost uh, um, gone, but it's okay, let me come back to you. What's the possibility that INEC would be open to um, allowing these seven plus million to 
conclude that process? Is there any possibility, any chance whatsoever um, to, for this to happen? Mr. Koye, can you hear me? Uh, Mr. Koye, are you there? Uh, I think we lost that connection. Mr. Koye, can you hear me? I'm, I'm here. All right, quickly. Yes, I can hear you. Did you hear my question, or should I ask it again? Uh, please ask your question again. Yes, yeah, so I'm asking, is there a possibility that these 7 million people can be reaccommodated by INEC uh, before the um, election proper? Uh, will there be any possibility whatsoever? I'm telling you that we don't have 7 million people uh, who are out there waiting to be registered and who registered online. Uh, what I'm saying is that the moment you use our online platform for pre-registration, you are scheduled for a biometric capture and you are given a date when you can go to any of our state or local government offices or rotational centers for biometric capture. If you do not go on the date you are given for biometric capture, you are supposed to reschedule your new date of appointment. I'm saying that we don't have 7 million Nigerians waiting to be, 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 be registered. The over 3 million Nigerians who are in diaspora, who did uh, pre-registration, and who are still outside the country, uh, and who have not come back, cannot be registered. The section 10 subsection 3 says you must appear physically. So if you don't appear physically, there's no way you can be registered. Moreover, the commission has suspended the CVR, and it can only be reopened after the 2023 uh, general election. If you look at section 9 subsection 6 of the Electoral Act, and you read it together with section 19 subsection 1 of the Electoral Act, it is very, very clear that when the lawmakers make a law and use the word not letter down, what they are saying is that the electoral management body or the body that has been given that responsibility can end a particular process before a certain date. So the lawmakers have given us the right to end the registration process, the CVR, before 90 days to the election. And that's exactly what we have um, done. We are cleaning up the register now. We have gone very, very far. And it is too late in the day for us to come back. Hmm, interesting. Well, unfortunately, that's all the time that we have on the show tonight. I want to say thank you. First of all, is the National Commissioner Information and Voter Education Committee, INEC, and Olua Dari Kolawale is the Deputy Director, Serap. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for having this conversation with me. Thank you Thank you so much. All right. Well, I want to thank you all for being part of the conversation tonight. But before we go, I would like to give you my take. Here's my take. Great leaders are supposed to unite the people for a great purpose. However, this leaves me to consider the nature of our country and the great divide that's between us. I mean, we've already had one civil war in our history and the sentiments that led to that has never really gone away. Hence the conversation about restructuring and even secession. Conversations that some people won't even entertain. When former President Goodluck Jonathan speaks of failure of past leaders to unite us, I am actually left to wonder if we aren't avoiding our own duties. If the way to treat each other is any indication, parental lessons about being cautious and kind, obviously we never really took them. The responsibility of building and sustaining a democracy rests with us, the people. Abraham Lincoln's definition of democracy as a government of the people, by the people, for the people, makes it abundantly clear that the people determine its failure or its success. As Nigerians, we must unite if we want to put an end to insecurity, to corruption, to voter fraud, and continued incompetent leadership. The leaders that have had their chance to unite us and jettisoned it, well, I think it's time for us to take on that burden and show them the door. After all, a house divided against itself cannot stand. My name is Mary Anacle. Have a good evening. <laughs>